So if you guys want, I can uh, pose a uh, theological question to you. Unless yeah, you want ahead. to continue talking about Smokey. I mean, I know he's yeah. the flavor of the month, but I don't want to, you know, step <laughs> on really. my... He's the unflavor of the month, but we can't get rid of. I mean, we can't get rid of it because he keeps on indicting people like Otangelo, who we are, you know, close friends with. <laughs> um, all right, so I posed this question to Neff, and he gave me a very Nephilim free answer. So um, I'm sure you guys are familiar with the lawgiver argument. Mm -hmm. So you know. Um, Natural laws exist. All laws come from a lawgiver. Therefore, there's a lawgiver, right? Yep. Yep. So the question I posed to Neff, just to get your guys' opinion, is um, based around premise two. All laws have a lawgiver. That has always been like assumed to be true, but it's not necessarily something you can prove. And since you can't prove two, you can't prove, therefore, the conclusion. Like I can't, I may not be able to think of a law without a lawgiver, but that doesn't mean that one can't exist necessarily. Mm -hmm. So, just wondering your thoughts on that idea. That's a good question, Orgo. So, um, I'm, okay, I'll, 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 I guess my, I'm going to argue it this way. So does. Um, so there's there's a saying that um, I forget the exact saying. It says, "If does one overturn all the other examples?" I forget. It's not like it's, I get the exact saying. It's um, hold. On, let me try to think of it. It's a does one compromise the majority? Or it's it's in, along those lines. So I'm saying the majority. Yeah. So so it has to do with the majority. Does the does the one lone example overturn the majority? So I would say no. The majority of the time, we it, it does reveal a lawgiver. So I'm saying that um, that is a, that's uniform, and therefore we should we ought to believe that laws come from lawgivers. I'll just put it that way. So so you're saying. Until so you saying that I don't you don't have to show that B is true. I need to show you that B is not true. Is that kind of right. what you're saying? It's, yeah, what I'm saying is normative for lawgivers to or laws to have law give. It's a normative thing. I'm fine with that, yes. Yeah, but and that's, but and you're that's not, all I'm yeah. But the conclusion isn't usually said as normative. The conclusion is usually said as absolute. And I can I can grant you A is absolute, but if I can't grant you B is absolute, I can't give you C is absolute either, right? Right. So I wouldn't say it's absolute, but I would say it's it's the the best explanation to it's it's the best sufficient explanation to what we have. Yeah. I, okay, because usually it's used as a proof of God rather than as like yeah, a, uh, no, evidence that's, for God. Yeah. You know? No, I wouldn't yeah. say that. No, I wouldn't say that. All right. Yeah. Sorry. Go. Go ahead, Gavin. I was just going to say what, what Orgo is saying is actually quite true. For for a syllogism to be correct, premise one and premise two, they both have to be correct. They both have to be true. Therefore, the conclusion must be true. Um, and I get what he's saying about laws require a lawgiver. Um. See, <laughs> it's. I'm not I, trying I, to I, turn I, you guys into atheists by this no, question. No, no, no. Oh, no. no it's, it's, it's a classic iron these. shop and iron thing. Yeah, I, I, I love these these questions, Orge. Um, it's it would be it would be physically uh, and empirically impossible to show the existence of the Judeo-Christian God. Because we know from Scripture that that He's present and He exists uh, concurrently in the past, 
in the present right now and he also exists in the future um and he's not a shape like a like a human body so how could we how could we show that you know we wouldn't be able to show that the best we can do the very best we can do is look at the evidence that infers what what the most likely expl explanation would be and i think that's as close as we can get yeah, I mean, I, 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 to me, what you guys are saying, I think, rings better. I don't just, I don't agree with the argument, but I think it's less of a proof and more of a argument for. But it never right. shows up in conversations as an argument for. It always shows up in conversations as a proof. So yeah, I disagree with yeah. that. I think that's a little bit hasty just to to say that's a proof of something. No, because well, you, I'm sure you've heard people say it as a proof, though, right? Yeah, I have. Yeah. Okay. So yeah, that, 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 that's your five minute break from Smoky Talk. I hope you enjoyed it. <laughs> and that was a good, actually, good thought. I actually have there. a question for anyone here. And simple enough, it's does anybody know anything about like the Coptic? Orthodox Church of Alexandria. It's just a question. I'm trying to. I'm trying to see if anybody. I've been trying to find anybody who knows anything about it. I'm sorry. Can you repeat that? I didn't. I didn't hear that. I, I, what I said was, does anybody here? know anything about the Coptic Orthodox Church of Alexandria? Oh, Alexandria, no, but I do a little bit about the Coptic Church from a, a, a buddy Neo we had the other day, so that's about my extent of it. Well, simple enough, I'm trying to figure out if, in regards to that in particular, one in particular, if simple enough, if they teach universal salvation. Oh, I don't know. That's a good question. I was, well, maybe Neil can answer that. Yeah, well, part of it is because I know of this church already, because um, the name of it is and what it claims to be is the exact same name in history and claim made by one of the six schools of theology back in the day, the School of Alexandria. And I'm not talking about that, you know, one thing that people think about. I'm talking about when it comes to Christianity which, of course, believes in universal salvation and is also responsible for people like Origin. But aside from that, I'm trying to figure out if this school actually still teaches it. And the reason I even stumbled upon it is because I was looking up information on the, what Orthodox Christians believed on this kind of topic, and I came out across a channel called Coptic Answers, and they were starting to talk about it, and things were brought up like Alexandria and whatnot. Their innocent church, if you will. So I'm trying to figure out, find anybody who actually has good information that can help verify yes or no if this church does believe in universal salvation or not. I have no idea. Okay. guy. Yeah. <laughs> All guy. I've got I've just got some random things here that infer infer a lawgiver. So just there are no particular order. Just t tell me what you think. Sure. Um, the universe obeys laws and rules of mathematics and physics. True. Its implementation depends on the. Where I may be back. I'm going to stream mm -hmm. up. Its implementation depends on the action of an outside intelligent agency um that i that i question could you could you expand on that a little bit what does that mean exactly yeah, well, I'll read, I'll, well i'll read it again the the universe our universe it obeys laws and rules of mathematics and physics um we we know that through through scientific Supposition one, okay. So if that's true, and we know it's true, the universe obeys laws and rules of mathematics and physics, the implementation of these laws and rules of mathematics and physics depend on the action of a separate intelligent agency because they just don't make themselves. 
the the laws and the, the the laws of physics and the rules of mathematics they don't just make themselves or go they don't just puff into existence by themselves so that i guess to me sounds like an assumption more so than a fact um you haven't shown how they don't pop into how they don't just exist you're saying they don't just exist there's a difference there isn't there um i'm saying that our entire universe obeys obeys laws and rules of mathematics and physics yes i'm not disagreeing with that light light travels at the speed of light no matter where you are um yeah. a tree falls in the woods it causes vibrations no matter where you are i agree with both of those okay so 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 our our difference our difference is going to be the cause of those laws and rules of mathematics and physics isn't it um i think that's i think yeah supposition two is the issue if my worldview is correct then the those rules um exist without having a reason to exist and there's no, and that's not necessarily a false statement right um you know, and then that kind of jumps into your string theory and your multiple dimensions and all that crap. But besides from that, you have, you know, gravity at 9.81 meters per second towards center of mass. It is that way. It doesn't necessarily have to have someone calculate it first. Sure, sure. Okay. Um, here's another one just to consider. I'm just picking these randomly, right? Sure. So the fossil remains, the fossil remains, um, and in particular, the Cambrian explosion demonstrate the very sudden appearance of life forms without any intermediate life forms um, that that would uh, you know demonstrate macro macro evolution. Yeah. Uh, Kevin's uh, robot. Uh oh. Yep. <laughs> Half ape, half man. I'll restart my phone. <laughs> I guess uh, he was talking about the Cambrian uh, Cambrian explosion, and yeah, to my knowledge, that is a more or less sudden appearance of many different forms. Um. I don't necessarily know if that's a problem in paleontological circles or not. I'm not super up to date on those things, but given the uh, rarity, if you will, of fossils and the fact that the Cayman explosion is where you get a lot of like your fish and your harder fossils to begin with. If uh, the Cayman explosion coincides with essentially things getting bones, <laughs> then you wouldn't necessarily expect lots of proto bones to survive and you know for every fossil we find we probably crush five more so it's a very uh hard to pin down science to my understanding but if you Colin, guys don't want to talk fossils are you there <laughs> <laughs> I think he tuned out for. I think his uh, connection went gone, but that's all right. Yeah. <coughs> yeah. I just, I just need to get. I just need to get through this beer before I go to bed. So hopefully the conversation <laughs> can continue. Yeah. So I think yeah, Gavin is what we call a foundationalist, and we try. You have to give a foundation for your beliefs. So. When we say that these these laws of the universe, they are not necessarily empirical because uh, math is abstract. We don't, you can't um, empirically find these things. Like under a rock, you're not going to find. Yeah, you, you know, can't math. touch the number two. Yeah, exactly. So what? So the rules. So these would be rules, you know, governing. These laws, the descriptive laws we see. So I, he, I guess where he's driving at is the source 
it it would seem to me like it, it would seem to be that it would, it would be a mind that is behind it. Yeah. Because you, you know, minds they are logical. So we would say that they're logical. They, I mean, they have validity. It's coherent. So these things are coherent. They're, I say that he's, I think he's trying to argue it's more consistent with the mind, but I think that's where he's driving it. I, I think that's what he's driving as well. And I think, right. That's one of the big divides we have here is I don't necessarily agree with that synopsis that, um, a mind is required for these things to exist. Um, th that whole weird concept of two being abstract, that's, I, I'm not very good with, uh, you know, I, I like to phrase things and give examples, and my jargon isn't quite as developed as your guys' is. So to me, two is two no matter where you are. I can't touch two, but two always exists. You don't right. need something to. You don't need something. You don't need a mind to have two. You know, to me, to me, two isn't in my mind. Two is two. Yep. You know. But he, there he is. There's Gav. Yeah. Yeah. I'm. I'm hearing what you're saying, all gay. Yeah, and since and since two, uh, two exists kind of without a mind. Why do we need a mind for two? It's kind of the way I look at it. You know, the tree still makes a does the tree still make a noise if it falls in the woods and no one Absolutely. hears it? Well, Absolutely. yeah, it does, but at yeah. the same time, no, it doesn't because a sound requires a brain to translate the pressure waves. But the pressure waves still exist. Sure. Sure. What well, speaking about mathematics and, and the number two, for example, Orgo, I, I I would I would say something along the lines of we have Human objective logic, we have that. We know we have that. So that seems, doesn't seem to have been developed uh, via an evolutionary line. So if we have truly human objective logic, the source of that human objective logic is likely to be um, a necessary first perfect mind with perfect objective logic. Because, and I say that because how could we get um, human objective logic from something or someone or some entity that wasn't already perfectly uh, logical and truthful? So I guess. I, if you ask me what the best argument for a uh, creator or a god would be, I think the absence of a good understanding of how both thought and instinct develop is a good one. Um, I, I could not for the life of me. I've never heard a good example of how non-instinctual things got instinct or non-thinking things got thought. That's right. That's so to me, that's the sort of step that you kind of need. You need to do a biogenesis in a lab to see how that works. Um, right. That being said, I have an issue saying that. There, since I don't know now, therefore I can't find it later. Yep, and that's fair. That's fair. I'll, I'll accept that. But but this is this is one of my default positions when ex explaining. God, exp God is is the explanation for all of the evidence that we have, and it's the um, tag argument that I'm just saying this in an abbreviated form is that absolutely everything traces back to God, even the uh, invisible, abstract things like the laws of logic, the laws of thought laws of mathematics, laws of morality, for example. These are invisible things, and yet we know them. Yes. Yeah, immaterial. Uh, I, th I think that's probably why it does. I mean, so I would argue this way that, yes, 
math and abstracts are not um, contingent on human minds, but that shows us that it's, it's contingent on a universal mind, though. So, yes, those things exist regardless. They exist regardless of our mind, but they're not reduced to physical nature, physical phenomena either. Because they uh, they transcend them, so you can't say that re they're reduced to physical material, um, because then they wouldn't be laws; they would just be arbitrary um, regressions, infinite regressions. It would just well, something well, else, something then, else. Yeah, yeah. But then I'd have the issue of saying my thought is tied to a specific uh, electrochemical response in my brain, right? Sure. I, you, uh, my personality can be changed by brain damage. So sure. how am I to say that my personality doesn't have a physical component? Sure. All right. So, go ahead. I'm sorry. Uh, uh, you're probably going to say what I'm going to say, Praise, but you go ahead. Well, I was just about to say the brain is just an interface for the, Im the immaterial. It's just a computer. And many uh, neuros neuroscientists say that um, it's just, it's kind of, well, I mean, Eric Hernandez, he, he gave a good analogy. If you have a, a, comp um, a piano and one of the keys gets broken, it's still, the, the key's still working. It's just, it's broken. You know, I, mean, I think that's a good analogy. I'm sorry. Go ahead, Gavin. I, I, okay. I hear what you're saying about, um, thought inside your brain, thought inside your brain is a, product of electrochemical uh, stimulation or changes or this kind of thing. And that is true. That is true to a certain extent. However, that doesn't explain what um, the human race um, refers to as universal laws of logic, universal laws of thought, universal laws of of mathematics and universal laws of um, morality. Yeah, I, I, but I think those are kind of two different conversations. Um, the laws of blankety blank 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 is um, where did that come from and where did my thought come from to me are separate things, right? And I guess praise to your uh, piano analogy – if I if something happens to me and I turn and I turn into a completely different person because what's what Phineas Gage right the guy that had a spike through his head and yeah 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 that guy yeah, right? yeah. um it, it it wouldn't be like the piano breaks a key it'd be like you hit the piano and it turns into a violin to me and um and and then what you said about the brain being like a uh, computer that translates stuff. I've never seen evidence for beyond the brain, which is kind of to my point, wherein Phineas Gage had a spike go through his head, and then he essentially wasn't Phineas Gage anymore. And there's other examples like that. And I, yeah, I, f I fail to see the beyond the brain part of his personality and who he is at that point. Yeah, it's just. <laughs> With Phineas Gage, um, Orge, that is true. That is true. His personality was considerably altered. Um, but Joel, Joel just made a, a comment in, in, in the chat, which, which is also true. There are people that have suffered severe brain injuries and their, their character and personality is not changed. Exactly, yes. Which to yeah. me says there's a part of the brain that has your character then. And if that part isn't damaged, you're not hurt. And if it is damaged, you are hurt. So you physically exist in your brain someplace. Well, I would disagree with that because neuroscience is showing something called neuroplasticity or brain plasticity. And it's just by will, desire, you can actually change the infrastructure of your mind. But yes. I would say this, I would say this too, though, that it's an impediment to your soul or spirit if if you have some type of like a Phineas and he had that going on change of his personality, yes, that can change your physical character, your characteristics as in a natural human, in a human sense. But what he is eternally, what God made him will always remain the same. And I think that's where uh, maybe that's the difference of worldviews, I guess.
Yeah, exactly. Um, you know, that's fine that you believe that. I, I personally don't believe that third step, right? Yeah. So, and in your worldview, that makes complete sense. In my worldview, the same story makes complete sense. <laughs> so, 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 Olga, so Olga, here's a question for you. And trust me, it's not a not a gotcha question. <laughs> it's not. It's none of those. Do you do you think or do you believe that um, the laws of logic are universal? Um, I would probably say yes, in the sense that no matter where I exist in uh, space, things are still going to act the same. Yeah, I, 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 I agree with you. I do agree with you. So then the question, obviously, that's begging to be asked is, what is the cause? Where did those universal laws of logic arise from? Yes. Uh, and to me, I would say they are built into the fabric of that space and that time in the same way that cotton is soft because it's cotton. Sure. Like, I don't think I don't find, I don't find there a reason for someone to tell um, gravity to pull the center of mass. I, I, I can accept that gravity pulls the center of mass and right. not need an additional step. Right. What was the cause of the gravity? Um, I guess you could say it caused itself. I don't know if that's a good phrasing. I imagine you, a you could, you could say that, but, saying it that yeah, way, you, but yeah, you, you could say that, but I, I don't. I don't believe that. I don't believe something can't just. I, I, I don't believe something can form itself. Yeah, and this gets exactly to my original question, wherein that lawgiver argument doesn't really do a good job of arguing for something because it relies on you and me having the same assumption. And if we have a different right. assumption, then the argument falls flat on its face. Right, right. Right, because you can't, you can't prove to me that a law requires lawgiver in the same way I can't prove to you that a law does not require a lawgiver. It's just oh, exactly. whatever side yeah, of the fence yeah, we're on. Yeah, yeah. Look, 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 look. I agree. I, I, I agree with you. I can't. I can't empirically, physically, materialistically produce to you or show you God. Yeah, I can't. I can't do that. And on the other side of the coin, you, you can't. You know, materially, <laughs> physically, prove that God does not exist. So we're yeah, kind of. I, I don't take the Matt Dillahunty approach that there is no God. I, I think right. that's pointless. But right, it's right, funny right. that that part one says part one is made up of things that are absolutely by definition true. Two equals two. That's part yeah. one of the argument. And then part two of the argument abandons part one of the argument. So. Well, if we're talking about a simple equation, okay, um, one plus one equals two, and we draw a circle around that entire equation, we can justifiably say that inside that circle is a description of a correct equation. Yes. That, that would be fair, eh? We can say that's a, a, a description of a correct equation. Now, if we if we take out the parts of that equation, the two ones, the symbol plus, the symbol equals, and and the sum, which was two, we could say that these individual parts of this description equation are the prescriptive parts of the equation. But the equation itself would also follow that definition. So you, you, you're making the parts of the equation and the finals of the equation the exact same clump thing. No, 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 no. I'm, I'm, I'm granting that the entire equation in itself, inside the circle, 1 plus 1 equals 2, is a description of a correct mathematical equation. You don't think it's prescriptive? No, I think it's descriptive. I think it's descriptive. So one is prescriptive, but one plus one equals two is is not prescriptive. No, no, no. The one, the symbol plus, the other one, 
in in the equation. The yeah. equal symbol and the sum, which is two, if we take them all out independently and, and lay them on a table, they are all prescriptions that when put together inside the circle make it make up a description of a correct mathematical equation. See, yeah, I, I gotta disagree with you because the same the same reason you could say that one is one, the mm. same argument would also make one plus one equal two. That you don't have a different argument between the two of them. Mm. Because I think one uh one is defined as one as one equals one, A equals A. That's the algebra of what one is. Yep. And that's the same algebra rule that follows one plus one equals two. Like they're in the same sure, sure. sense. Sure, sure, sure. But, but but would you grant would you grant me, Orge, that the rules of mathematics, the rules of mathematics are prescriptive? Um Again, these I'm not super fluent with these terms, but I'm going to assume I would say yes. Okay. Well, that's good because because I, I agree that they're prescriptive as well. Because the reason why I say they're prescriptive, all gay, is that they still exist whether I'm thinking one plus one equals two or I'm putting two, two blocks together to make two blocks, you know. They, they, the, 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 the rules of mathematics still exist whether I'm describing them, using them, thinking about them, writing about them, or yes. anything like that. Yes. The rules still exist. So therefore, the rules of mathematics are prescriptive. Then yes. the obvious question is, where did the prescription come from? And then, again, we go back to this original argument. You're using the word prescription, which needs a prescriber in its own definition. If I describe the, the all this stuff without using the word prescription, I wouldn't need a prescriber. Like you, you're using like your uh, terminology as your evidence, sort of. Um, you know, I can just say that one yeah, is. Yeah. I can say one is, and is doesn't necessarily need something else. Sure. You know, sure. In, in, in uh, DC Comics, uh, if you, I don't know if you guys read DC Comics ever, but there's this excellent run of Mister Miracle recently, and the whole point mm -hmm. of it was Dark Side is, and the mm -hmm. point and the idea behind mm -hmm. that was Dark Side is a force of nature. He doesn't need a reason to exist; he just does. If you right. know, I'm sorry, I'm going off on a tangent. No, no that's okay. Anyway. That's okay. That's okay. But uh, fantastic I, I, comic, I, by the way. I'm not sponsored. I promise. <laughs> I don't think we can get DC Comics in New Zealand. But anyway... Oh, um, your life sucks. Yeah, yeah it does, eh? Um, <laughs> but I still firmly believe that the rules of mathematics are prescriptive. Uh, yeah, and again, right, we're going in circles here. I grant that your worldview requires that. But I don't think you're making an argument that my worldview is inadequate. I'm failing to see the argument here. Maybe, maybe I'm not good enough at philosophy to see my own fallacy here. I don't sure. know, but it's not working on me as an individual. Sure, sure. But if, if you agree with me, Orge, that the rules of math, just, just use a simple example, if the rules of math are prescriptive because they're still – they still work, even if we're not using maths. Yeah. If we're, if we're just having an afternoon fiesta reading a book, the rules of mathematics still exist, so they're still prescriptive. Yeah, again, I, I, I'm, not, I'm not arguing that the rules of math don't exist in and of themselves. I'm, not, I'm in no way, shape, or form trying to argue they don't. Right? I, haven't, I don't think I've been relaying that idea to you. No, 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 you haven't. You haven't. Yeah, I'm you not haven't. arguing I'm not arguing supposition one at all. I'm right. arguing I'm arguing that supposition two that you need a you need someone to tell the rule what to do. That seems like a step that you haven't proven, you're just assuming. Um if if we're agreed, if we're both agreed that the rules pertaining to mathematics are prescriptive, then we've got to ask, why are they prescriptive? How did they become prescriptive? 
Yes. Yeah. I that that is the question, right? And to me, the answer is they are prescriptive. They just are. Uh, to me, I don't see a reason why I don't. I don't see God up there looking at the number two and thinking uh, that's going to be two, right? To me, that's not. That doesn't make any sense. Why I would need to add that extra step to it. I don't understand why two just can't be two. Right, 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 right. And I, I'm not hearing an argument why there needs to be a God that says you're two and you're three, and he's and he's up in his fingers with each of these counts. And sure, once he sure. passed ten, I don't know what he did. Sure, sure, sure. So. But hold on, but, but hold on. I, I've I, I've asked you why why are the rules of mathematics prescriptive? What causes them to be prescriptive? <laughs> and your answer is they just they just are they just are prescriptive. That's okay. That's okay. Yeah. But see, I'll go one step further and say they're prescriptive because they require a prescription giver, and that prescription yes. giver is who Christians think is the Judeo Christian God. Yeah, and and I grant in your worldview. That is legitimate, a hundred percent. In your worldview, the prescription requires a prescriber, a, right? Yeah, a prescription giver. A prescription giver, good. sure. Yeah, yeah, right. yeah. I hundred percent grant your worldview of that. If my worldview is true, and the Big Bang happened, and space and time expanded out, two was just two, as long as two was a thing, right? I, I'm assuming. I, I would assume two requires matter, but if two doesn't require matter, then two is everywhere. Um, I can't fathom an idea of two not being two, but I also, weirdly enough, can't say that's a certainty. Right. And, and again, that's just me kind of um, thinking well beyond my pay grade here. Like, yeah, no, I, that, I don't... that's fine. That's fine. That's fine, all guy. Yeah. Yeah, no, it's a, it's a good discussion. It's it's a great discussion. Yeah, I can't prove that two is not two in some alt, alt, alternate dimension of my worldview. I can't prove that, but right. I also can't not prove it. So if anything, I'm going to have to say just say it's a possibility, not a probability. You know, right? This is probably a better discussion than Jill's video. It's Smokey. I tell you, Smokey, he thinks two is three, and that's just, you know, just crap right there. So, <laughs> and that's why I love you, all guy. That's why you're my favorite atheist. You tell it like it is. <laughs> oh, I, I still like Smokey because I don't have a, I don't have a ball in the court, so I can just be. No, friendly. no, you, you've got no, you've got no skin in the game. That's for sure. Oh. But yeah, I mean, you know, these are good conversations. Um, yeah. But it does seem to me to be a bit circular, right? We have been, you have been trying to nail home the same point, and I've been giving the same. Uh, Joel hates my argument, but I still keep giving it, you know. And um, yeah. maybe I, I, un I understand your your argument. I understand your explanation. Um, yeah, I understand it. I do understand it. Yeah. But yeah, that that's kind of all I had. I don't know if there's something else. I got about half a beer left. It's uh Mothership Wit by New Belgium, in case anyone cares. <laughs> oh my god. <sighs> Prize. Prize, are you awake? Yeah, just enjoying the convo. Has has that premiere started yet? Um Let me see. 49. He moved in 49 minutes from now. Wow. What is Jill doing? He says, it's not going to happen. It's says, not going to happen today. It's not going to happen today. I guarantee it. Yeah, I don't know. I have no idea, man. I'm destroying your guys' conversation. Convo. Keep it up. He wants to go on the circle again? Yeah. <laughs> uh, oh, I got a pee soon. Jeez. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, um, there's one thing I would like to respond to really quick, though. Uh, you, brought, you brought something like the number two. We wouldn't say 
God says this is the number two. We're not seeing that, but we're seeing it as part of his nature. It's um, these things are. You talking are, about commitments? Are you talking about commitments? Yeah, we're talking about um, well, metaphysical type of um, constructs out there, like, like math, logic, whatever. So we would say that's just part of his nature. He um, so he has these components that are that. Are, make up his his being so yeah well but in gavin's example he said prescriber a prescriber right scribe write something down so in gavin's example god said you're going to be two and he had two fingers up i mean otherwise his example kind of fails doesn't it yeah, well no not really because because um, mathematics is just one example, but I'll, I'll put I'll put four together to to try and make it a bit clearer. Absolute truth, absolute moral thought, absolute moral morality, objective morality, all of these invisible um, abstracts, they are rooted within God. They're rooted within Him. And they emanate from him. And us as human beings, we are made in his image. So there's parts of us that reflect what is rooted within God. Albeit that we're seriously, seriously flawed, you know, we're a bad copy. Um, so I guess uh, two, two points here. One, you guys can have to be the nature of God but I can't have two just be nature. And then two, aren't you kind of running into a nesting doll problem here where if two just is because God, then who told God that two just is? Well, God's, um, he's non-contingent or gay. No, nobody made God. Well, let me explain this too. So in the, in the beginning, when the creation happened and God was there, God was so powerful that he spoke his son into existence. So, I mean, and we know this because it talks about how the father spoke Adane into existence. So, figuratively speaking, they that's how two came about. Yeah, but why is that a good argument for you? But me just saying two came about and putting a period halfway through your sentence is a bad argument. Because what it does is it, it basically uh, makes it declarative and makes it uh, it makes it declarative that uh, nothing existed before God. But you say, but you're declaring on God, I'm declaring before God. So I'm, I'm failing to see why. No, I'm saying yeah. nothing, nothing existed before or with God. Nothing. God is existence. Uh, is the is the beginning of all ex existence? Sure, but your argument seems to stem on the fact that I agree with your argument that God exists. If God doesn't exist, then I don't see where where you have a foundation here, right? I mean, if I if I think God exists, then yeah, I could see what you're saying, Apostle. But if I don't think God exists, then what you're saying doesn't seem to matter much. So if God doesn't exist, then how would the story of creationism happen? Well, exactly. Creationism didn't happen then. That's a story. Whereas I'm saying that um, two exists, and I'm not adding because God or th via God's... Well, I don't remember how you said it phrase, God's nature. There we go. Via God's yeah, nature. Yeah. Yeah, rooted and rooted within God's nature. Yeah, yeah. Um, if I don't believe in a God, I therefore don't have a God's nature, but I still have two. And two existing without God can still exist. Like if my yes. worldview is true, yes. two yes. still exists. Yes. yes, very true. All guys, look, that's very true. One hundred percent true. Yeah, but I, I, and I, Apostle, I also want to say that your argument works for your worldview. I'm not trying to say that you're wrong in your mind. I'm just saying that you're wrong in my mind. 
and my mind has the better beer, so therefore I win. <laughs> but we see, Orge, we're presupposing the exist existence of God. Yes. We're presupposing God's existence. Yes. Yeah. That's 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 probably, you know, at the root at the root difference of our of our worldviews. Oh, 110 percent, exactly, right? Yeah. 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 And if there's a Muslim in here, they'd be presupposing their variation on God too. And I'm oh, sure yeah. the argument and you'd be having an argument with them about something. Yeah. Oh yeah, for sure. Yeah, for sure. <laughs>